So at this point, I've made some pretty significant progress on my Polk sled update. Now, it's been a couple days since the first part of this video. I really had to sort of sit here and... I don't know, I guess just evaluate things. I had to kind of look at the setup. I had to figure out what would work. I had to look at different mounting options and solutions, look at some of my hardware, figure out what gear I wanted to bring inside my sled to make this entire system work. But at this point, I'm fairly happy with the way this came out. I think it's giving me a good quality update. It's much more convenient than my prior system. And I think there's some things here that would be very helpful for you. So as you look at the sled as a whole, you'll notice now around the entire system, I do have different gear mounted. And in order for me to do that, I had to look at this bin and figure out what could I do with this bin to actually allow me to attach things to it. Now with the key feature being I did not want to put actual penetrations into the bin. I wanted it to maintain a watertight and reasonably water resistant system for my gear inside. Everything inside is really my sensitive equipment. So my sleep system, my clothing, the things I need to keep me safe. So by not allowing holes or any penetrations, that was absolutely key. So as I was looking at the underside of this bin, I realized here there are all these reinforcement fins. And if I drilled a couple of strategic locations, like for example here, I can get a bolt right through there, which will give me a nice lashing point for like a bungee cord. But the problem is the washers that I have are too big. They actually won't fit inside there. So I just stacked them up here in my vise. That is four washers there and just took my angle grinder to the top of them and knocked off the top so now they'll fit nicely inside. Give me plenty of surface area to help distribute the load as this is pulling down on that plastic. I don't want to overly stress it, but that'll help kind of to even out the, um, you know, the tension on it. And so I'm hoping at this point it'll work. So I'm gonna let these cool down. They're still a little bit hot to the touch uh, from grinding them down. And at that point, I'm going to get this thing installed, get the uh, pins into place, and that'll give me some good lashing points to help hold things on the side of the sled. So now that you see how I've created a couple of these mounting points, I did that pretty much around the entire perimeter. Now I'll show you that in a little bit more detail once we get some of these other features off of here, but let's start by removing the cargo net. So as of the, I would say, uh, end of the first video, I was pretty much working on this part of the system here. I got my eyelets in and these carabiners to hold my entire cargo net down. Now to remove this is quite simple. All I really need to do is open that up and pop these off. So I'm going to take all four of these off, get that removed, and we'll continue on. So with the cargo net removed on top, I just have myself some rope. That's very helpful because if you get to some sketchy areas where you really don't want the sled to be connected to you, or if you need some additional help with somebody else to help kind of maneuver through some tight areas, you can use the rope, tie it to the sled, and drag it where you need to. That has come into play many times. So having rope and the ability to really lash it to this sled and pull it where you need, definitely a must. Now additionally on top, you'll see here, I just have a little bit of Cordura fabric. This stuff's great. You can buy it by the yard. It's fairly inexpensive. It's a good quality water resistant um, fabric where it's lined. So uh, it has sort of like a rubberized lining on the bottom. And what that allows me to do is use this as a staging area, maybe a seat. Uh, just gives me different options while I'm out on the trails. I found this fabric coming into play many times. So on the side of the sled, I've mounted my snowshoes, I've mounted an ax. As we spin this around here, I have two snow shovels on the back and continuing to rotate again, my other snowshoe, and this is a buck saw. So adding my tools on the outside, easy to get to, they do not inhibit my ability to get into the bin. And now my snowshoes, I can get really quick and easy if I need them. Now my ax, my saw right on the outside of the sled, perfectly mounted and very easy to get to. 
And finally on the front, I have a couple of pouches here. Now these don't have anything in them currently, but this will be my medical kit. This will be my small supplies, and it'll also have my fire making kit. So right on the front of the sled, red pouches mounted nicely. I actually just used some bungee to bungee it to the front of this. It stays nicely in place, and the key is there. I still have this nice space underneath, which that's where I'm going to keep my food and water so I can get to it very quickly while I'm out on the trails. So I'll have basically a small pouch or bag, something that allows me just to slip it in here if I need to. And you'll notice down here as I spin this, get it into the light. I do still have a couple of clips. So I've had the ability to mount some clips on the inside. I also still have a couple of lashing points. So if I need to really tie the bag down and get the bag mounted into place so it won't fall out, that's gonna be no problem at all. Now the way I mounted the gear on the side of the sled, I did it a couple of different ways, but I found this worked out pretty well for me. So first is um, for the saw, you'll notice that I did take one of these D-rings and just loop it onto the carabiner. So that way, even if it slides out of place, it absolutely cannot go anywhere. So that is basically completely fixed into place. And then on the side, you'll notice that I used one of the clips from the pouch and just lashed it right around my bungee cord. So that's how that's held into place. Um, but these bungees here, as we get into this, I'll tip this up on its side. And as you look there, I have these bungees fashioned around the bolts that I put in there. Now, did I have to use bolts? No, I could have done one of a couple of things. Really, I could have put other carabiners in there. That wouldn't be a problem. So whether you want to use the bolts or carabiners or anything like that, not a problem. For me, the bolts seemed to make sense. It was tight out of the way, nice and firm in place. It's not wiggling around. Gives me the ability just to lash that up and over there. This is not going to pop off. It's not going to come out. I did that in both locations. And then these bungees here are uh, the best I had, really. So it's this little T which is like a toggle, and these kind of just slide into place, and that helps me hold everything in. So as long as I'm careful and I don't lose these while I'm out there, it won't be an issue. This is the one sort of liability I have on this. Uh, it's the best I got. I'm using my pre-existing tie-out system. I'm just kind of making do with what I have, and these are kind of what I had at the moment. So this is really, like I said, the only thing that's a little bit suspect here, but it still definitely works. But you'll notice that's how I hold these snowshoes. Now the snowshoes set right down into the side. So not completely, they don't completely fit in, but the bottom fitting in there nicely, good and firm. These aren't going anywhere. And then once I have the bungee kind of up and holding it into place, you'll see here this one's still in location. So holding the snowshoe tight against the side of the sled, that works very well. And if I need them while I'm out on the trail, it's quite easy and convenient just to get these out of here. But then the snowshoes coming out quite simply, and now I can access them, get them on my feet, and use them if there's some deeper snow. And basically the exact same thing on the other side, my snowshoe, and then my axe. So I've been playing around with this Spyderco axe. Um, it's basically a small axe or a large hatchet, which I think is gonna be nice. Um, I, this to me worked out very well where it has a pouch, it sits inside that pouch, the pouch slides nicely into place, bungee it in, and very similar uh, to the saw, basically on the back end, here I have a D-ring, affixed right to that carabiner so no matter what it can't come off and that to me I think is going to work very well. Now getting to the back side with the shovels. This was something that took me a little bit to figure out what I wanted to do and if you look here I do have a couple things going on. First I drilled these fins so these like sort of uh, support tabs here. I drilled them out and put a couple carabiners that gives me additional lashing points if I need it. So very simple, just something I can utilize if I need it. But then here you'll notice there's bungee cord coming down out of the top. Well, that was something that I really didn't know that I was gonna have the ability to do this. However, if you look here, this worked out extremely well. There are these holes right down in the top that go pretty much down through here. And what that allowed me to do 
is take this bungee cord, get some washers on them. I put some washers on the top, tied some knots, pulled it down and through, and that is perfect. It's not going anywhere and gives me the exact lashing I need to hold these shovels right in place. So very good. I'm happy with that. And so as I mentioned the entire time I built this with the ability just to remove this top without too much difficulty. So even if I had my snowshoes on the side or my pouch in the front or my shovels in the back, no matter what I can get this top off with ease. So all I really need to do is just take one side of the cargo net off and that top will come off. So very similar to what I did in the back with the shovels. You'll see as you look in here, this green again, that's some shock cord. I put it right down and through. So as you look here, basically I tied some knots. There's a washer down underneath that the knot can't pull through. And that is just down inside that hole. And again, down through the bottom here. So these Craftsman bins have been absolutely perfect for this. Where the reinforcements, where you need them, they work these sort of fins and all the different things and the holes and it's just worked out great so um, even though I wasn't thrilled about the bright red top and the fact that it says Craftsman the overall quality and construction of this bin has been perfect for this build and as I mentioned I just held this pouch on the front again with some bungees so drilled myself some holes got a bungee through put it through some of the loops of the pack held that into place very similar to what I did on the bottom here. So again, you'll see the loops from the pack, the bungees. And then here, all I did was come down and loop over these studs. So I was originally, if you remember, going to cut these off and I thought they would come into play. Well, that's definitely the case here. So if I wanted to take this pack off, very simple, I just unloop that, this comes out. Be careful, don't lose the bungee, not a problem. And then this whole pack will come off while I'm at camp. And then when I need to put this back into place, simply taking it, looping it on. It's very quick and easy, very secure. These aren't gonna come off, it's not gonna be a problem. And this works great right on the front of the sled. And so that pretty much leaves me to the contents on the inside. Now at this point, I don't have it fully packed out, but what I can tell you is I have everything I need for my basic camp setup, short of my clothing. So there's a good amount of space remaining in here. And what I have is pretty much 30 pounds in shelter. So I have my Krua Cocoon, which is an insulated tent. You've seen this in a couple of videos. It works extremely well. I have the pump in here for it. I also have the Krua Duo, so the actual tent itself. Here I have my sleeping bag, so my Sea to Summit Micro 3, which is a good quality, warm down sleeping bag. I have a real thick mattress pad, so an inflatable pad, but that's a nice thick pad. Gonna give me some good thermal value, keep me comfortable. I have everything from all my food, eating, and preparation equipment, my stove, my gas, my fuel. I even have myself a little grill in case we have a fire and I wanna grill up, so I have my little portable grill. Um, I have a whole bunch of the basics in here, like I said, short of my clothing and anything really to keep me warm, but there's still a ton of space left. So this is gonna be a great volume, capable of managing my gear, capable of keeping it safe, nice and protected, this good, thick, durable bin. There's no way water's gonna get in here. Um, if it snows, even I would say if it rained, even though it's really meant for the winter. I don't see rain being an issue, but if it were to rain, it would be protected. So overall, I think this is a great system, good and convenient, and definitely easy to get to my gear. So all right, guys, there you have it. A real quick look at my Polk sled update. Again, always a work in progress. I'm always looking to, I would say, refine my system. So make upgrades, make things that are hopefully easier to use. My original Polk sled was great. It functioned extremely well, but there were some deficiencies. So I identified them, I came up with a solution, and I think this is gonna be something that'll work very well for me. Now it'll be interesting to see this while it's out on the trails. I will certainly be giving it a good test. It's gonna be a little bit till we get some snow on the ground, but the good thing is I'm ahead of it. I have something to look forward to, and I think this is something that may give you some good overall tips and tricks if you're interested.
Now, I know you're probably going to have a bunch of questions. If you do, definitely feel free, reach out. I do my best to answer any questions that I get. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.